Welcome to session one of the Anxiety Management Programme. In the introduction, I told you I was going to talk about three things. What is anxiety? How do we experience anxiety? And the fight-flight response. Let's start with thinking about what is anxiety. It's a common word and is used freely. And it's a word we use to describe our feelings when we are frightened or worried about something. And it's fair to say that most of us feel tense or anxious in certain circumstances, when under pressure or when in the company of some individuals. Usually, this anxiety fades when the problem disappears or when we learn to deal with it effectively. But for some people, however, the anxiety does not disappear spontaneously, but will develop into a vicious cycle of constant worries, leading to feelings of apprehension or fear. You might be thinking, you know, that's me. I can relate to that. Well, stay with me because you'll probably be able to relate to other things in a minute when I read them out. Although it's hard to believe, anxiety is a useful response in certain circumstances. And you might be thinking, I can't possibly think of when I'd want to be anxious. It always feels so horrid. But many of the physical symptoms of anxiety are very useful. That is, at the right time. For example, in a life-threatening or dangerous situation. First, let us look at how we physically experience anxiety. See if any of these physical symptoms relate to you. The physical sensations of anxiety are triggered by the brain interpreting a given situation as anxiety-provoking. A message is sent from the brain which triggers the release of the hormone known as adrenaline. Adrenaline is released into the bloodstream. This in turn leads to a complex reaction in the body. The heart is stimulated and speeds up, sometimes quite dramatically, which is often interpreted as palpitations. You might already say, yes, I... Uh, I experience palpitations when I'm anxious. Blood circulating to the muscles increases and the muscles, especially those of the shoulders, arms and legs, tense up, which may cause a tremor. So you may feel that you're shaking all over. Familiar? The lungs increase oxygen intake and the breathing becomes rapid and shallow. You relate to that? Shallow breathing. And the body functions that are not vital to survival are shut down. So the digestive system shuts down because actually you don't need to be uh, bothering to digest food at a time of uh, being in a dangerous situation or anxiety provoking situation. So that shuts down. But what it does or can do is cause churning. You know, the sensation of butterflies in your stomach very often sort of say, oh, my stomach's just turned over, or I've got butterflies in my stomach. You can often feel sick as well. And you may also experience a dry mouth because the secretions have dried up as well. The body requires an efficient, efficient cooling system, so you, you may find that you sweat more at times of an anxiety-provoking situation. And special senses sharpen including sight and hearing, which are often felt as disturbances. So you can feel hypervigilant, on standby, looking around, fearful, thinking that somebody's going to be creeping up on you and you actually need to be very vigilant. As we can see, many of these symptoms are actually very useful responses and would be vital if we were in a life-threatening situation. Normally, we're not in a life-threatening situation. But if we were, the body would be preparing for its fight-flight responses. The symptoms of anxiety in our bodies that we may experience nowadays link back to the evolutionary design of our bodies. In prehistoric times, when faced with a life-threatening situation, let's say if you were in the jungle and you suddenly came face to face with a tiger, your body has to react very quickly. It's no good just standing there thinking, what shall I do? It needs to be 
a really quick response to either help you fight or to run away. So, for example, the heart pumps very quickly to get a lot of blood and oxygen around the body, particularly so the arm and leg muscles are all ready for action, whether you're going to run away or fight. You also breathe quicker to get ready for this physical activity. You want more oxygen. Also, your body decides it does not need to do other things, such as digest food. It can always do that later on when the danger's passed. Consequently, you get a dry mouth because there is no need for saliva, because you are not going to eat any food. Your digestive system slows down, and some people experience that as a churning or butterflies in the stomach. You might give it another name, but you may very well be able to relate to what I'm saying. So you see, the reactions that your body gets are perfectly reasonable and understandable. However, nowadays, because of the way you think about certain anxiety-provoking situations, these reactions in your body may believe that the situation is more life-threatening than it really is. And of course, then it prepares itself for the fight-flight response. It's a natural occurrence of the body protecting itself, protecting you. However, now, we are very rarely in the kind of threatening situations these reactions were designed for. And our stresses and anxiety come from work, relationships, the general fast pace of life that we now find ourselves in, and rarely from a situation that requires such a response. So it's almost an exaggerated response to things now. Remember, anxiety does produce physical symptoms like rapid heart rate, but it does not produce physical harm like heart attacks. The physical symptoms are not dangerous. But of course you may think that they are at the time of experiencing them. They are very unpleasant and they are uncomfortable, but they can be tolerated and can be tolerated until they go away. And it's important to remember that they will go away. It's just a case of believe, coming to believe that really. Well, that ends session one. In the next session, session two, we'll be looking at how anxiety affects you the psychological symptoms of anxiety the be and the behavioural symptoms of anxiety. You might want to think about those before you listen to the next session. Anyway, thanks for listening.